Greetings, this is Vlodrin and welcome to the review for Children of Morta. Children of Morta was developed by Deadmaids and was published by 11-bit studios which sent me a key for this review. But first things first, you are the Bergsons, a family that has been entrusted with guarding the mountain Morta. Corruption has started seeping into the land, transforming and twisting it along with the animals and creatures that inhabit it. The storyline unfolds slowly as you try to understand what is happening to the land and how you can cleanse the corruption. Surprisingly, you start caring about the family almost instantly. The family home is warm and colorful. Knickknacks are left pretty much in every corner of the house. Everybody has their room and their characters are always shown in the house doing something. Talking about things or relaxing or making things, there is always something happening every time you go back to the house. You Returning to it every time a run is done and seeing how everyone is doing makes it feel like home. There is always a small narration or dialogue to experience that helps to flesh out the world and break the monotony of doing the same run if you are stuck somewhere. A great way to take a breath and immerse yourself even more with the Bergson's lives. The story has heartwarming moments but also somber ones and even some pretty dark ones both about the family and various other characters or entities you meet along your journey. You unlock various areas in the house that let you update your characters with money you collect from your excursions. You can update your equipment or various other stats throughout the game and you will need to do it if you want to progress smoothly. The world is intriguing and you visit three different main areas. The caves, the desert city and a dwarf-like underground city filled with machines. There are also other small areas you visit on story specific missions, but mainly you will travel through those three areas. Those have multiple sub areas each, and each sub area has a boss fight which upon winning unlocks the next sub area. There are remnants everywhere of a thriving civilization that seems to be mostly gone. The Bergson's family is a family of warriors, so almost everyone in it will be available for you to choose from. When you pick an area, you select the character you want to use. There are six characters in total and they all play in a totally different way. Some characters are melee based and some ranged. Some are faster and some slower, while some can take some damage while others are squishier. Some might be better for a specific area or a boss fight, but in the end, I found that it was really a matter of preference since all of them are competent in fighting, it's just depending on who I liked more. When you first unlock a character, they start at level 0, but they level up very fast and it's fairly easy to get them to the appropriate level. They each have their own skill tree and yet another reason to level all of them up is that there are skills in every tree that are global use, like a character appearing to help you on specific moments or being able to use runes from different characters. You can focus on a few characters to level up instead of everyone but they get corruption fatigue pretty easily, so leveling them all up and utilizing different characters per run makes more sense. It is a nice gameplay mechanic to make you play with all the characters instead of selecting your favorite one and playing only with those and it ties very nicely with the storyline as well. Now while exploring an area, you will not only fight the various creatures inside it, but there are a lot of side events. Hidden behind blue barriers, are various events from side stories with different characters to mini games that give you items and money or health. Some might be puzzles where others are fights with some storyline behind them, like rescuing a wolf pup and then having to find herbs to help heal it or release trapped merchants that then appear on the areas for you to buy more items. You can also pick numerous souvenirs which then you can see decorate the Brexon's house. When clearing an area, you will find a diverse amount of items that can help you. Some will be permanent, like relics, for the run only of course, which will perform a specific action, like a chance to nullify damage from a hit or slow enemies after you get hit. There are quite a few relics, so you will do well to collect everything and you should explore the areas in their totality before attempting a boss fight because you will need their help. Apart from relics, there are also charms. Charms are one-use items that you activate and then they are consumed. You can also get temporary buffs from obelisks you find inside the areas. 
Those run out pretty fast, so be sure to make them count. Collecting gold or morve is going to be a priority if you want to actually upgrade your characters through Uncle Ben's workshop or unlock Rea's blessing. Killing a lot of enemies in a row will give you extra gold, 10 enemies or more. And the more you kill, the more you get. One other thing you will find are gemstones. Those can be used to open special boxes that might contain relics or runes or money and health. You can also use them to buy items from the merchant, so they can be quite important when you want to prepare for a boss fight. There is a blessing that increases the drops, so be sure to take that early. Now, when you die, you don't actually die, but you are instead teleported to the crystal beneath your home. Dying means you will lose your progress through the areas and all the relics, charms, rooms and gemstones, but you will not lose your gold, which is great for leveling up characters because you can do a run and even if you don't succeed in reaching the boss or die from it, you still retain all the experience you gained plus the gold which you then use to upgrade global abilities like health or damage. The aerials also reset when you die, so next time you will visit, there will be different configurations, different minigames and sad encounters. Having different characters breaks the monotony of runs if you are stuck somewhere too, since you get divergent gameplay from each character and you keeping gold and experience makes it not much of a hassle if you die. Graphics-wise, Children of Morta is based on pixel art and it is very pretty. Great colors and really good animations, both in characters and in effects. Everything is vibrant, even darkness, and the art makes the game a joy to play. As far as sound goes, I'm not sure who the composer or composers are, but I love their work. The storyline is told by a narrator, and he also narrates various events, side stories and happenings in the house and elsewhere. He does a pretty good job, and the composers have also done a fantastic job weaving the music with the various story bits, combat scenarios and in general all scenes in the game, making Children of Morta extremely atmospheric and easy to get lost in. There is no manual saving system, but the auto save system is competent, so I did not encounter any problems there. As far as bugs go, the only bug I got in my playthrough was some inconsistency with the storyline. An event happened, and then the storyline afterwards for the next hour or so was before that event, which was very strange and confusing. I'm pretty sure I was supposed to get that scene later in game. It wasn't a huge issue, but it was immersion breaking. The difficulty is well balanced. I never felt the game is too hard and I'm not very good at roguelikes. There is a big difficulty spike on the third area, but it is manageable. While challenging, it was easy to understand what tactics you needed to use, both in normal enemies and bosses. There is no difficulty setting and perhaps a new game plus with a harder difficulty should be added for those that enjoy a harder challenge. Children of Morta also offers co-op and a local one too, but I cannot speak on how well it works or how well balanced it is since I finished the game solo. In conclusion, I was left with happy feelings, both for the family of Bergsons and for the quality of the game. Thank you for watching this review. As always, feel free to leave me a comment or suggestions on the review or other games you would like me to cover. Press the like button if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe to be notified when more reviews go online. Apart from YouTube, you can find me on Twitter at Vlodril or on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash Have a great day and I will see you next time.